Hi, everyone. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Anjali Sood, who is, of course, CEO of Vimeo. Anjali, nice to see you. Thank you, Diane. It is great to be talking to you. So I want to start with the climate that we're in. You know, there's been a lot of discussion around generative AI and the impact that'll have on creativity. I know that you've gone through, like, like many other tech companies, you know, some periods of downsizing. What are you thinking about in terms of the opportunities right now in this environment? For Vimeo? Oh, well, you know, I think for Vimeo, we set out about six years ago now to, to, to pivot the platform away from competing with YouTube and really to being a platform that could power video for work. Mm -hmm. um, and it has certainly been, you know, we, we, we had the boom of the pandemic. We're in a challenge time now. But if you think about our goals, it really hasn't changed, which is we want to make video far easier and more accessible for every employee, every team, every organization to be able to create and share content the same way that they do on TikTok in their mm -hmm. personal lives um, and the same way that they use images or text or email today. Um, and so we've invested heavily in technology like AI, machine learning, but also in just building the right products that we can deliver to our customers in an intuitive and easy way. Um, and I think there's a lot of innovation left. We really think we're early in how video will be used at work. If you project out five, 10 years from now, um, I expect far more of our communications will be video first. Mm -hmm. And the friction that we experience today in using video is actually quite large. Um, and I think, you know, our job at Vimeo is to reduce those barriers and, and make video a far more effective medium for us all to use every day to be more productive, more engaged, and more connected. So I think you'll see us um, just really continue to do that. We will certainly, like many other companies, look to do that with more focus and efficiency right now. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you know, the mission and the market opportunity for us really hasn't changed. So let me... Um pause a moment because there's been so much of a fear factor in recent weeks around AI um, and yet there's obviously a lot of excitement around the potential. How, how do you think about it in the context of, of your own business and even what, how, what you're seeing clients do? I think both are true. I think uh, AI represents an incredible opportunity to accelerate creativity. Um, and the reason that generative AI can do that is because it can take ideas that are in your head and instantaneously bring them to life. Mm -hmm. And that can be incredible for inspiration and creativity and just the speed with which we can create content. Certainly on the flip side, there are a whole lot of areas where AI can be costly and dangerous if not managed thoughtfully. Um, and I think you know that's similar to a lot of parts technology, mm -hmm. if you think about, you know, over the years. And so I, I, you know, my perspective is we cannot be afraid or shy about leveraging the potential of technology to help us accelerate our mission. And we have to take uh, an offensive kind of perspective there mm -hmm. and be willing to try and experiment with things. We also have to, you know, recognize the role and responsibility that we have and participate thoughtfully in the ecosystem. Um, which I assume will come with real, you know, regulatory and other um, guardrails. And I, I think, think that's, that's okay. I think that's um, right. And ultimately I'm, the right. I'm curious about where you sit in the corporation because, you know, you are, you talked about, for example, um, the, the reskilling, the opportunity in trading. So there's the, you know, chief human resources officer. There's the CIO as a gatekeeper. There's obviously marketing. I know your background. Are you finding that that is shifting in any way or, or, how would you describe the sweet spot for you? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think historically, Vimeo was very strong among creatives. Mm -hmm. The agencies, the filmmakers, the editors, who were the ones really creating content because you needed a huge budget and a script and a team to be able to make a video. As the barriers of creating and sharing video have, have come down and as video has become more ubiquitous, what we're finding is that actually we're getting traction in a lot of different departments. Certainly marketing is where we're the strongest. So a lot of marketing teams are using Vimeo to create content for social media, for their website, um, and to just work with creatives on work, work in progress and drafts. 
But what's really interesting is the other area we're seeing probably the most traction in has been HR and comms teams. Training videos or what are they doing? So it's really interesting. So um, during the pandemic, not surprisingly, it was live streaming town halls. Suddenly you had a distributed workforce and you could no longer communicate it as, a, as an executive, anything important, you know, if it, especially if it was time sensitive in a meeting, in a mm-hmm. physical meeting. And so you saw a big explosion there. Since then, what we've actually been seeing is, is pretty surprising. One, um, training and enablement. So the idea that you used to have somebody, you know, fly to every region um, to have an in-person training that wasn't recorded and you couldn't go back and search for the piece that you missed, um, that's completely gone out the window. And, you know, we're seeing things like we launched an interactive video feature, a feature that makes a video clickable. Um, We originally thought that that would be primarily used to make something shoppable. Think Mm -hmm. of it as like an e-commerce video. I want to buy that CEO's outfit, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it's more, yeah. I mean, a lot of the marketing teams using it for, you know, e-commerce, but what's interesting, Diana, is that we're actually seeing even more traction among HR teams making training videos, want to train your sales force, want to train your new hire, making those interactive, adding polls and quizzes and choose your own journey and adventure. Why? Because the next generation coming in doesn't have the attention span to read a training manual. They're, you know, on TikTok and Roblox all day in their personal lives. They need that kind of experience at work. So it's almost like the gamification, the gamification of HR to some extent. Well, we'll talk about the different platforms in terms of, you know, TikTok, which I know is another one that's been both welcomed and fraught to some extent. Um, Is that really a place where the enterprise plays? Uh, The way that we think of it is um, if you're a marketer, you need to reach your customers, right? Online. Mm -hmm. And most of the eyeballs and time spent online are on social media platforms, whether that's Meta or TikTok. And so um, our job, if we really want to make video more accessible, is to help any enterprise and their market, their social media manager, whoever it is on that team, easily create beautiful branded content that they can publish natively to TikTok or Meta or Twitter or LinkedIn. And it's pretty crazy if you think about today, what you have to do. If you're not using a platform like Vimeo, you literally have to create a piece of content daily, right? Because you mm-hmm. got to post daily on social media. The life shelf of a video is, you know, very short. And then you have to do that and upload it into each platform with different, you know, specs and different requirements. It's just not efficient or scalable. And so we create tools that make it really easy to create content for every platform, publish it all from one place, optimize that content. And that's really how we've played with the social media platform. So we think of them as partners. Vimeo used to compete with YouTube. They were a competitor. Now we partner to help enterprises create content for YouTube. And that's really the way that we have found to sort of add value in accelerating the use of video so ecosystem. Let, let me ask you, since you're on the front lines of, of places we don't necessarily get to go, and you're seeing a lot of the ways in which your customers and yourself are, are using these different platforms, what have you seen? Um, let's talk about TikTok. Clearly, Gen Z is there, you know, for off hours and on potentially. Um, what would you recommend? You know, if I'm I'm a leader, I'm sitting here saying, yeah, we got to be on TikTok. How, 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 and and what should I be doing? Yeah, well, I think um, it depends on the goal. If if from a marketing perspective, I think you have to be on TikTok and you have to find ways to create content for TikTok and have the right team to be able to do it. And tools like Vimeo will help you. What about as an employee, employee like HR? Yeah, if you're thinking about sort of employee communications. Um, you know, my perspective would be, uh, it's all about trust and authenticity today. Mm-hmm. If, if you look at Gen Z and you look at the younger generations, really what we're hearing, and you know, we hear these, these, these things, trends around quiet quitting and, and all of these, oh, the next generation is different. They're not that different. And, and, and being disengaged at work isn't that different. Nothing's really changed there. Um, what's what's really changed is the onus is becoming more and more on leaders because we live in a distributed world where, you know, even with things like AI, like authenticity is scarce. It's scarce. And so as a leader, we have to find ways to build trust while communicating digitally and at scale. 
And by the way, communicating in a time of challenge, right? So, We're in a so pretty what tough do, market. What do you do? I mean, I, I, I don't want to get too far in the weeds of tactics here, but but the aspiration is is similar for many leaders. The execution is very different. Um, yeah. What what do you do personally? Like, I, it's hard to engage. It's a passive experience when you're watching a screen. What's I have three. Of I have three three um, lessons okay. that I would say I've learned in the last couple of years around communicating authentically and in a trusted way with employees. And I'm certainly not perfect, but these are my lessons. Mm -hmm. The first is I think you have to be comfortable. And in some ways, it's like an act of real vulnerability to be real and unscripted. Mm -hmm. The power of communicating in video instead of an email is that email got edited and your comms team wrote it and then somebody like changed this word. But when you just record a message, and I'm not talking about a fancy edited video, I'm talking about just record a message from me to our employees telling them about important news the more unscripted I can be, the more real and trusted it comes across as. Mm -hmm. And that requires, that's why I say we have to reskill leaders because we have to teach ourselves how to take the mask off and be comfortable being direct in a video. And that means not just the words we say, the, our body languages, the context, right? It all comes across in a video very differently than in an email. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's one. Um, and I think I'm betting that the leaders of tomorrow will get far more out of their teams if they can be comfortable being unscripted and real in a very human medium like video. The other thing I see a lot, particularly from the newer generation is they don't want to be told a, about a decision or the what without starting with the why. I think what I mean by that is con explaining to people, not just, oh, we made this difficult decision or we're going to do X instead of Y, but giving them the respect to share the context, here are the trade-offs, here's how we made the decision, here's who was involved. That's kind of like a comms 101 no-no from traditional comms was like, just tell them what you know you need to tell them. Mm -hmm. I think people today, particularly in the next generation, like they want to feel like you are being transparent. And even if they don't agree with your decision or it's a hard decision, and I've made my share of them in the last year, people will respect it a lot more if you take the time to explain the why. And then my last, you know, lesson, and this sort of speaks to interactive video is an example, which I just shared, which is we, we have to move from this idea of like a lean back broadcast. Like, let me, let me broadcast something to you mm -hmm. and tell you something that you're going to listen to and absorb and then go follow and create more of a lean forward engagement, which means we need to ask our employees to participate, whether it's live Q and A whether it is, you know, click here and choose your own adventure or tell us immediately at the end, give us your survey results on what you like, what you didn't engage people as part of the conversation, because again, in their personal lives, that's what they're doing. You know, they're not going to sit there and, and watch something and listen to it and just pay attention um, anymore. And so these are ways I think we as leaders have to reskill and adapt if we really want to get the best out of you know, the next generation of the workforce. And by the way, doing that is essential for us to be successful and for our bottom line, because if we don't have a team that's productive and we can't get them aligned and doing the things that we all need to be doing collectively, then the business won't be successful. Is there anything else, or let's, let's, again, I want to root this in the current environment. You mentioned there's a lot of recency bias I feel that we all suffer from. Like when times are tough, we think, oh, you know, we're talking about economic climate, layoffs, et cetera. But yet we know that these are opportunities to, to rebuild and, and to be, we've got, especially at a time like this with such innovation, what are you seeing? And again, you can talk about it in the context of Vimeo or with your customers, but where are the areas of growth are? We're talking about the how, how to engage people. What about the the what and some of the things that you see generating excitement? Yeah, I think um, I think the smartest companies, and I think a lot of companies right now, are looking at this challenging time through the lens of, um, how can I turn it into an opportunity for focus? And ultimately, you know, creativity is born from constraints. And I think many of us, and I will say, I think Vimeo is one of those companies where 
when, when it's boom time, you know, I remember during the pandemic and everyone's using video. And so what happens is you, you start to get a little bit of shiny object syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. Because everything looks like a good opportunity. And so then you're like, I have to invest in all of it. And the truth is, if you want to be really amazing, brilliantly amazing at something, it's often very helpful to focus and to be all in on it. And I think, you know, certainly the way we're looking at it at Vimeo is, uh, you know, we call it innovation through simplicity. By simplifying our operations and our focus, how can we actually innovate more? Um, and I, I think that we say it differently from maybe other companies, but the, the theme is the same for a lot of them, which is where are the areas we really must win at? And let's double down there. And the places that we're going to streamline or we're going to shift or adapt away from are the things that we didn't need to be great at to begin with. And we actually ended up getting, you know, sort of distracted by all of that shininess. And so um, I am optimistic, cautiously. I think it's going to be, you know, it's not going to change overnight. And we have our work cut out for us um, as leaders and as teams right now. But I do think that the push to focus and the push for simplicity um, can still bring innovation. When I think of and simplicity and what companies will do that. Anjali, when I think of simplicity and what you do, I think I'm picturing Steve Jobs going through and just sort of like, no, 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 we're going to do this. What, what are some of the, like, can you just tell us before we, before we end a little bit, what, when you talk about simplicity in your context, what dreams have you perhaps streamlined or, you know, decided we're not going to be great at that and we're going to be great at this? Like, like give us some insight into your own thinking in the context of Vimeo itself. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, for Vimeo, it's been really more about which users and use cases we are prioritizing in all of our efforts, our roadmap, our marketing. Um, and, you know, it, it was during the pandemic, as I said, everybody, every business of every size and every industry was using video more. Every yoga studio was live streaming their classes. Mm -hmm. Every school, every nonprofit, Every creator was making a ton of money putting content out on the internet. And I think, you know, we were simultaneously pursuing how to be um, a, a sort of the, the platform of choice for those users while simultaneously moving into the enterprise. And we had some of the biggest Fortune 50 and Fortune mm -hmm. 10 companies in the world who have started using Vimeo and all of their employees are using Vimeo as our platform. And I think um, what this time has forced me and Vimeo to do is say, okay, we can't be everything to everyone in video. We can't serve every user the way we want. And so how do we focus on the enterprise, mm -hmm. focus on helping businesses use video in marketing and employee comms? That's our focus for 2023. Mm -hmm. And then in other ways, how can we actually just simplify our user experience, simplify the platform, focus on organic viral uh, growth in such a way that we don't cede the rest of the market to others. And, you know, that's that's a pragmatic approach. It's how we're we're looking at things. Um, but I think a version of that is what many tech companies are going through. And I ultimately think it's probably a healthy exercise for all of us and one that, you know, we ultimately were going to need to make Great. as hard as it is. Any other points around um, advice to leaders? You know, since you've seen so many of them communicate, we talked about reskilling leaders. Hate to end on I, tactics, but what, what would you say? Um, let's not forget, people don't leave companies. They leave managers. And as CEOs, we are the ultimate manager. And um, there's plenty of research. I was just looking at, there's a recent uh, Harvard Business Review article research around this, but um, you know, great managers build trust and they build relationships and that's our job. And um, if we can find the right way to do that in this environment, we will build you know, high performing teams and be able to deliver better results for our shareholders. Great, can't think of a better place to stop than there. Anjali Sood, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Diane.